Okay, so I got my Laguna IQ here and uh, and to go over how I go over maintaining this piece of equipment and uh, there's not a lot we can do on this pretty much uh, it, everything is sealed pretty much but uh, I got this Makita blower it's a very handy little piece of equipment uh, I use it to blow out the uh, council down here and also clean up every drum a little bit of lithium white grease here and I got this grease gun here with this uh, grease fitting here and I got a tube of lithium white grease from Greg Distributors it's food grade lithium and uh, it's the thinnest I could get and I use that to grease the bearings here you can see on my machine focus here We've got these uh, grease fittings here, but there's no way we can get a grease nipple on there. But with that uh, needle type grease fitting, or grease fitting on my grease gun, we can get on here, you press it into the center, there you see a little grease popped up, and uh, we can get a little bit of grease in there. So uh, that's about all we can do on that. So I'll go, I'll, I'll give them each a shot and it takes very little. I'll go over these with a paper towel, clean them up as, long, as well as the screws. And, uh, and the ball nut down inside there, there's one for each axis, of course, and you just can't get to them. But uh, I'm gonna pull this one out and show you all the other machines that are, uh, have loopers on them. There's a port on the the uh, ball nut for greasing it. Where these ones don't have it. Okay, on X here, I uh, <clears throat> I unscrewed the uh, ball nut from in there off of the uh, spindle uh, assembly here. Looking for a uh, grease zerk like the other ones have got, like the. Uh, bearings have got here see the crease nipple here and there is nothing on this where we can grease it in any way there's a hole here in here and these are simply set screws there's one on each side and it holds these seals in place on this one so there's a seal there and there and that's what these set screws hold in place so there's no way for us to grease this uh, ball nut unfortunately so uh, the only way we can actually lube this is uh, I, I use lithium on a paper towel, spinning the, uh, the ball screw. I hold the paper towel against the ball screw with the lithium and let the lithium get on there and work its way in. It's, up. it's about all we can do here, unfortunately. Okay, now with this uh, needle fitting on my grease gun, just press it in the center of the grease zerk get it in there you got to put a lot of pressure on it push it in okay just a couple of uh, shots of grease is all it takes and then uh, you got to take your paper towel because you're gonna lose some grease due to the pressure in the hose here and then we'll do the bottom one lost a lot of grease there and we're going to do that of course there's four bearings on X four bearings on Y and uh, four bearings on Z okay I got the uh, all the linear bearings there's two here two on the other side two here on each side and of course your uh, your z-axis down here as well got them all looped up now now on the ball screws I'm just going to take a paper, clean paper towel, hold it on here. The spindle is part way down. You got it out of your way. And I'm just going to hold uh, uh, X plus. Rub it clean, go down to the end. And then I'll bring it back all the way to this end. And so there's plenty of room for safety on the other side of that. And then I'll, I'll clean the other side. But I ain't going to, with the camera sitting here, I can't reach that. But uh, I'll bring that back a bit. 
Now with this little tube of uh, lithium grease, I could use what's in my grease gun as well. On a clean part of the paper towel, I'll just put a little grease on there. Same thing, hold it on the ball screw and uh, put a little bit of uh, a film of grease on there. A little more here. I'll do that again, I'll bring it back. I'll clean that side and lube that side. And underneath is extremely tight, so you gotta be careful with your hands up under there that uh, you don't wanna get a pinch point because as small as these machines are, there's a lot of power in there. And uh, that's about all we can do to lube the ball screws and nuts and the linear bearings on the uh, IQ. Okay, so I got all the uh, the rails cleaned, rub clean and a little grease on them. Uh, these nipples up under here are hard to get on with that needle. If mine was longer, it'd be easier, but it's, it's tough. I got a little bit of grease in each one of them and all my uh, ball screws have got a little lube on them. And of course this one up under here, focus here, that's pretty tough. You got to get your arm up in there and uh, try and get a little bit of grease on it. So next thing is uh, I'm going to pull the cover off. I'm going to take these screws out, pull the cover off. And I had a few guys ask about this. Uh, I got rid of the bucket pump and I got this. Uh, this is an in-floor heater pump. And I got it from eBay somewhere. And it's a 220 volt. This pump comes on when I turn the master switch on on the council here. So when I turn that on, the pump is on. This is a, uh, a poly bolt gas tank. And I got a bulkhead here, half inch off of Amazon. The reason I went with half inch here is because I had to get the fitting through this hole. So uh, I had to get the inside part in. So I drilled the hole in there and uh, come out of here with this bulkhead fitting and it's silicone and into this uh, uh, in, uh, in for pump. This is a three speed pump. I run it on low and on low, I believe I believe it's 43 watts of yours. It's like nothing. And it's running. Right now it's running. You cannot hear this thing running. And uh, as you can see, I got this flow indicator here. It's turning. My return hose comes down here. And on the outlet side of my council fan ventilation, I got this computer radiator off of Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. Now being as this is on the outlet side, whatever heat is generated inside the council isn't going to affect, be affected by this. And there's very little heat on the, uh, comes out of the spindle anyway. Because they just use a bucket with no radiator, no cooler at all. So that's an exhaust fan. And uh, it, it's just basically free air, so I just zip tied that. It's like uh, two and a half, three inches square. It goes through the air, and then I return the fluid through the. Uh, this is the gas pickup line if you're running this on a regular boat. It's a very simple system. Uh, the tank I got from Prince's Auto here in Edmonton, I forget. It's like 50 bucks. The pump was on Amazon, or sorry, eBay. Uh, somewhere, China, I suppose, I don't know. But it's a three-speed in-floor heating pump, and it was like 60, 70 bucks. A few fittings. Uh, had to reduce the fittings down to this. This is the feed hose to the spindle motor, and this is the return. It returns through that cooler, and then back into here. And it's always clean. I, I run antifreeze in there. Uh, no, nothing grows in there. No, uh, 
Yeah, with a regular uh, have automotive antifreeze running through here. Because automotive antifreeze has rust inhibitors in it. It's uh, it's good for aluminum and other materials. And uh, you don't get algae growth with it. If you've got just uh, straight water, you might get algae in there. And uh, it, it'll just get dirty and uh, inefficient cooling. So uh, with the regular automotive antifreeze, it won't freeze in the wintertime. Because where I live here, we get minus 30, minus 40 degrees sometimes. And uh, I don't have a heated shop at the moment, so uh, I've never had a problem with this. Of course, I don't come on here and run it at that cold. It's got to be uh, above freezing, but when I run the antifreeze, I don't have to worry about my equipment freezing up and busting or nothing. And uh, I don't have to worry about algae growth. And it's, uh, it's what it's designed for, is for cooling. And uh, on our boat gas tank, if you do that, you can tighten your lid up, but you have a vent capability here in the top of the tank. And I just leave it just slightly cracked. So there's no pressure build up inside the system. And uh, like I say, this thing is running. And this phone is touching that pump. And uh, like you can't hear it running. Like the, the indicator is turning up here. I got it on low. I always run it on first, on, in first gear for speed here never had an issue with it warming up when I had the other pump system I was out here in the summertime with that five gallon bucket full of water it was so hot I couldn't put my hand in it and with this system with that little radiator cooler back there not a problem never never gets warm so it's uh it's well worth the time it don't cost a lot poly tank don't rust and a rust inhibitor in the uh in the coolant it's good for your metal, it won't harm your tubing, your hoses, and it won't freeze. Okay, so with the cover of my council off now, you can see you've got a little bit of dust in there. And that's where this, the key to blower comes in. Just, don't take a lot, you don't want too much air flow through there. The uh, inlet for the cooling it's uh it's bolted in so i'm going to blow from the inside out and then the rest is just a little bit of uh i don't want to blow too hard on my electrical components here Just get a little bit of the dust out of there. Like I say, the uh, the fan here draws air through there, through the council box. It, it circulates a little air in here to keep things cool. And then the outlet is where I got that radiator strap, that uh, computer radiator. So it's not affecting the temperature inside the, the box, the council. And there's nothing there to restrict flow. It's, it's wide open. And it works pretty good. Here you can see wires that go to a plug-in. That is the plug that goes to my cooler. Here's the main uh, power that comes from the main switches here. When you turn this on, it powers this. This powers this. And I got two... 3 amp slow blow fuses here and it also comes over here and feeds my hour meter so when the switch is on the pump is on and so is the hour meter so uh, yeah just blow that out a little bit now and again when you lube it up it don't take a lot there ain't a lot we can do on these uh, IQs the bigger machines they have uh, uh, lubers where you give it a pump now and then every 8 or 10 hours you give it a stroke of oil but unfortunately on the IQ there's no uh, there's no lubers and uh, it's a quality system 
uh, quality ball screws and linear bearings, it's going to last a long time. I looked it up. These linear bearings are rated for, I don't know, thousands of kilometers of travel. It's a lot. And uh, But a little lube is good, of course. If you can't, if you don't have these, grease circs, all you can do is give this a little lube. I don't know if they're different on different machines or not, but uh, that's about all we can do.